hello everybody and welcome back this is episode 21 of minecraft vanilla super flat survival and you may already notice some differences from the last episode on my base in my base so as you can see i made the structure right here and it seems a bit counterintuitive to place a large 8x8 um, roof without any walls blocking out the sunlight with slabs on top but what I, what this is is this is a construction to make sure that I can grow large mushrooms in this world so basically these mushrooms they cannot be exposed to sunlight while growing so well basically you can't I think that you can't bone meal them unless there's um, no sunlight down here uh, so basically, uh, this roof kind of blocks out the sunlight. The mushrooms don't really care about light from torches or something, but if there is sunlight, they will stop, they'll kind of pop out. And actually, I think that if it's way too bright, they will pop out too. And yes, as you can see, now I'm not able to place it. Place right here. I place a torch right here, it pops out. So also, you can not grow them when there is sunlight outside so this just blocks out the sun and this torch is not enough to make it pop out because I think it needs to be something like level of 12 for it to not be able placed and I think it, uh, there needs to be zero sunlight for it to grow into a huge mushroom now let me demonstrate that real quick so I take my bone meal and I bone meal it and this is what we get and if you can see that I kinda screwed up I think on the right side a bit I think I made it longer on one edge than the other, but uh, it works anyway. And as you can see, this mushroom has grown now, and there's only one block space there just to make sure that it grows most of the time, because it can go up a bit higher and a bit lower, especially for the uh, brown mushrooms. So, yeah, and that's what it's for. And I decided to put my wool and dye farm to use. I farmed some poppies some red flowers or poppies or roses or whatever you want to call them and I dyed some wool and then kind of created this warning pattern I guess or this uh, yellow and red pattern and I put this pattern to make sure that I can recognize the area where I can plant the mushroom because if I plant it on the side then it's not gonna grow correctly or not gonna grow at all due to sunlight uh, so basically this kind of shows the optimal area where the mushroom can be grown It can be grown either on this block or either on this block So we have this kind of warning sign thingy here and wow we got 24 mushrooms from that And now let me demonstrate with a brown mushroom. Uh, I still prefer to plant them on here though most of the time. So yeah Yeah, we did get quite a lot of mushrooms. These do yield quite a bit of mushrooms Okay, yeah, that one kind of took a long time to grow and yes as you can see right here. It's almost like on the edge right here, so Yeah, that's gonna give us some mushrooms too. Well, I Don't really need mushrooms that much you might be asking well mine Kralix, Why did you build this because I have other food sources like the the bone the redstone bone meaning farm right there, but what I basically want to do is in every let's play I want to build every possible thing that I can build and one of the things that I thought of building was a giant mushroom farm and since I had never had giant mushrooms in this world then why not and this is actually the first time that I grew a giant mushroom in a survival in, in a survival world I think well I think I did grow one of these in a vanilla survival world but I never grown uh, I never grew any large mushrooms in a super flat world okay we got a bit less for that just 18 mushrooms so let me just pop that in along the side with a bone meal and yeah there we go obviously I got all of them on mushrooms from the nether so that's great I now also made this nether ward farm now like I said before I was oh actually I got it yep that that one's not planted right here uh, and the reason for that is because I did not have enough soul sand to create a perfectly square one so I had to run back to the nether and get this one piece of soul sand just because I really hated having one piece not be here so this is our nether wart farm and this is where I'm gonna farm nether wart so our plot of land is kinda filling up moreover okay I'm kinda running out of bread there so this might not seem like a big nether wart farm, but actually I usually have much more nether wart than I'll ever need. 
And so this kind of whole area is now filled in with things, which is great. And back there, I think I'll, I have my iron farm and some other farms, like, um, and also a villager trading post or just stuff like that. But that's way into the future. Well, not way into the future, but kind of, uh, end game stuff. Oh, yes, I was going to build a, um, a melon farm. But I was actually planning to build an automatic, uh, fully automatic melon farm, so... So I think I'll do that later when I get iron from villagers and golems and stuff, so yeah. Okay, what the heck am I doing? Oh, yes, also, I also made this brewing stand, which is epic. I finally have a brewing stand, and right here is my little uh, brewing station, which is awesome. I was thinking about putting a wall here, but then I thought, no, actually, this does look kind of, this does look nice. So, uh, yeah, so basically, I got my little brewing station right here. This chest will contain all of my ingredients. And as you can see, I already brewed some potions, and actually quite a bit of potions. I got a ton of nether wart, and I'm going to get much more. I got two magma cream, three gas tears, which is amazing. 19 sugar from the um, witches, which is awesome. Before, I said that sugar is very, very useless in this world, but then I remembered that I can actually use it to make potion of swiftness, which is really awesome because I can run around the villages very quickly. So right here are all of my blaze rods. I farmed some more blaze rods. I died a few times, so that was bad, but I was able to recover most of my stuff. Um, now I just have blaze powder right here. I create, I crafted one blaze rod into two blaze powder, and that's what I used to create a potion of strength too. I also used some of the redstone from over there. Oh, oh, there's so many witches, they're glitching out. Wow, that must be amazing. I really hope we get more redstone. So anyway, like I said, I used redstone to create this speed too um i think oh yes i, I should really i should really uh, add some uh glowstone to this one because this is only speed th for three minutes uh, fire resistant oh no no i actually oh i just forgot i used i used uh redstone to lengthen the potion of fire resistance to eight minutes that's what i used the one redstone for and right here I have just some gunpowder right here, and which is probably the only use for gunpowder in this world to make splash potions. Right here, the, you can see this empty spot right here will be for my redstone when I have enough redstone. Right here are some of my glass bottles. I don't have much glass bottles. Most of my glass bottles are right here, but all these are from witches too. So yeah. And back here, this is where I'm going to add some uh, bulk potions. So when I start getting more potions, I'm going to add them right here. I don't know how soon that will be, but it's nice to have more chest storage space. Because if we fill this whole row with potions, given that we get more glass bottles, then I'm going to start putting potions right over here. And uh, right here, we also have potion of regeneration. I used up one gas tier. I did have four gas tiers, which is amazing. And yeah, hopefully we'll get more glass bottles in the future. Okay, right here I have some torches. Now I'm actually going to use Potion of Fire Resistant to fight ghasts, uh, Potion of Swiftness to run around the villages and stuff like that. Okay, let's go. I really hope that we're going to get some redstone from that. I really hope. Oh, there's crap ton of spiders. Okay, oh, there's two vill- Okay, okay, um, oh, no. we got sticks. Okay, let's hope we're gonna get redstone here. Please, please, fingers crossed. Oh, come on. Ah, we got spider eye. Who the heck needs spider eye? It's completely useless. Well, almost completely useless. I, I think I will still need it for uh, some potions maybe in the future. But also the, mush uh, the mushrooms are kind of useful for potions too, I forgot to mention, is that to make... Uh, to make... To cure a villager, you have to make potion of uh, slowness or something like that. I oh potion of weakness or something like that. And for that, you need a fermented spider eye. So you need a spider eye, uh, sugar, and a brown mushroom. I th I think if I can remember correctly. Don't quote me on that because I might be wrong on that. So now what I'm gonna do in this uh episode is I'm going to go over to the Nether and fight a bit more ga uh, ghasts and blazes and stuff. 
Now, this chicken has been able to refrain from, from glitching out for quite a while, because somehow the chicken right here was able to glitch out, but not the chicken right here. And I have been getting quite a bit of eggs from it, so hopefully as soon as I get about 20 eggs... As soon, no, actually, as soon as I get about uh, 18 or so eggs, uh, on average, because if you know when you shoot an egg in Minecraft, there is a small chance that it's going to spawn a baby chicken, and the chance of that is 1 in 8, so you need 8 eggs on average to spawn a baby chicken. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to collect about 18 or so, actually no, 14 yeah, I'm going to collect about, I think, 14 or 18 or so eggs. And then with that, I'm going to start making this fully automatic chicken farm. But first, if I don't have redstone by the time I get enough eggs, is I'm going to make uh, kind of like a floating chicken farm with uh, streams of water going towards the center so it completely prevents them from glitching out this is a really big issue and you can actually use streams of water to push the chicken into the center uh, into the center of the farm to make sure that they don't glitch out so yeah it's gonna take a long time oh actually one thing that I really need to do I think is that oh yeah yeah I'm not gonna go to the nether right now what I actually need is I need to get some carrots from a nearby village so to do that I'm gonna grab a potion of swiftness and then be on my way so I'm gonna take two of these right here let's just take three just in case and let's run over to the closest village so that's what I'm gonna do and in addition to that I'm also gonna make sure to let me just place all that in addition to that I'm also gonna make sure to grab some rotten flesh or something actually no I'm I'm gonna grab some potatoes yeah because in case I ran uh, I run out of this one bread because I'm completely running out of food that's what I can do so yeah I'm gonna go to those villagers over there because I know I have explored many villages over there I do want to explore some more villages in the future but probably not now and now we're off so like I said, I do want to explore some more villages, but I don't want to go too far out. And right now I, I'm going to an existing village, and so I want to go to a village that I already know has carrots. So that's just the thing there. Wow, we're going quite fast with the potion of speed too. But of course this does last only a minute 30 seconds, so I think this will only last until we're able to get to the actual village itself okay i see some is that a glitch or something oh wow I, th I think there was a glitch i wonder if you saw that or not but there was it looked like there was something lying on the ground which is kind of weird kind of like an arrow shape or something like that that was weird yeah that was a weird visual glitch i have never encountered those before so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go in grab some carrots and then run back and then uh, bone meal some of them using my automatic farm to make sure that I'll have enough, and also put it in two different chests just to make sure I don't lose it. Okay. Oh, this is where we got the carrots. So, okay, I don't want to waste my potions, so I'm going to run around as much as I can. Uh, okay, yeah, it's going to end, like, right now, so. Okay, there's quite a bit of villagers here. I'll have to also make sure that I... Oh, it ended. Oh, yes, this is exactly what I was going to do. I was going to come in here and get some of the bookshelves ready from right here. Oh, that's weird. There's no librarians in here. I know that there's no librarians is because li the librarians wear those white uh, uniforms. So, okay, let's see what kind of trains. Oh, I already traded with that dude before, I think. That's where I got the emeralds. So, um, No, I mean, that's where I got the melon seeds from. I crafted them, so... At the same time, I don't really want to be using these potions, but then on the other hand, the potions... Oh, okay, wait, wait, what did I just see? Oh, that was just, uh... I thought there was a villager, uh... Floating up, but it was just... He was standing somewhere right here. At the same time, I'm actually thinking about not using these potions of swiftness, because I might need them for something else. But then on the other hand, why would I need potion of swiftness other than running from village to village? And then you must remember that 
these potions, they actually don't take that much resources. If you think about it, it took me less than one nether wart, less than one sugar to make these two potions. And why I'm saying less is because it took me one nether wart, one sugar, and one glowstone just to make three of these. So yeah, and yeah, I kind of forgot about the glowstone there, right, real quick, because to make it um, speed two, you have to add glowstone. So it reduces the potion effect from three minutes to a minute and 30 seconds, but it increases the speed level from speed one to speed two. And wow, we're going so quick. And actually, these potions are very nice, especially these speed two, and I prefer them better than potions, uh, than the extended potion, which uh, is eight minutes long, because another option that we have is that instead of adding that, we could have added some more redstone to it and made it eight minutes long, but I prefer it this way, because that way we we don't have to use redstone and stuff like that, which is very expensive. And by the time that we're here, we have only about eight or so seconds left. We'll just run around while we have a few seconds left, and that's it. So let me just put that back right here, and now we have only one potion left. I'm thinking about turning these into potion of speed two as well. I think that's what I'm going to do, just to demonstrate how potioning goes. And there we go, now this is going to turn into speed two as soon as it's done. Okay, now that we got carrots, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to place two or so carrots right here, uh, or, yeah, three, just to make sure that in case they run out right there that we have uh, a supply here so we won't have to go, go and run for more carrots once more. And what's interesting is you can see the bottles right here in the texture, which is very nice. And wow, there you go, speed two. Another three potions of speed two. And it's a bit of a nuisance because I, I'm using two up and then I have one left. And then when I use up two more, I'll have two left. So, yeah. Okay, let me just kill the spider real quick. And right now what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to end the episode here. Uh, I don't know what projects I'm going to work on in the future and off camera. But I've been really wanting to... <laughs> I've been really wanting to get some villagers over here and start a uh, villager breeder, learn about villager mechanics, start the um, preparatory steps to making an iron farm and to make an iron farm. Before we can make an iron farm, we have to make uh, a villager transportation system from the nearest populated village to our base. We have to make sure that the villages don't interfere because the villager breeder and the iron farm will be separate villages that we have to space a hundred blocks away from each other. We have to make a rapid transit system to and from the breeder um, and the iron farm. We have to make it AFK and all that fun stuff. So. I think, and by saying preparatory steps, I mean I might start building a transit system or something like that. So in the future, we might get that. Oh, two villagers, two, uh, I mean, two witches. Okay, we got more than one sugar. That's already good. Please, redstone, please, redstone, please, please, please. Okay, what did we get that? Oh, that's not bad. We got another glass bottle. I would not say that it's good. I would prefer redstone over all the other witch drops. But to be honest, this is much better than getting something like gunpowder. Gunpowder is the worst drop hands down that you can get from a uh, witch. Because I have tons of it and it's completely useless. So, yeah. Okay, let me just place the books right here. And yay, we now got another glass bottle. So that's five and some more sugar. So that means we can make six more sugar potions with those. Uh, no, I mean, uh, six more uh, potion of swiftness with those, so that's great. Yeah, we, we do have quite a bit of sugar for a world that has no sugar cane in it and no sugar at all. So, thank you for watching. This is mine, Kralix, here. Uh, I might do some off-camera work. And I'm looking forward to doing more episodes with this. Thank you for watching. This is mine, Kralix. See you all in the next video.